The Samothracian and Phrygian mysteries are considered the oldest by the Greeks, and at the helm of these is Orpheus, the Thracian bard. The Phrygians and Thracians are separated by the Bosporus Strait, which is the border of Europe and Asia, the place where East meets West. The mysteries of both the Thracians and Phrygians are very similar, yet the names of the deities may differ. For example, the great mother of the Thracians is Zemele, hinting to the mother of Dionysus Semele's divinity to the Thracians, but the son of Zemele is called Zelmoxis. Zelmoxis is clearly the same deity who the Phrygians call Sabasius. Both are depicted riding the horse wielding thunderbolts. This proves that Zelmoxis and Sabasius are both influenced by Dionysus in their respective regions. Through linguistical analysis and the writings of Herodotus, we can really see this as a fact. Herodotus writes about Zalmoxis in Book 4 of his histories. The Gitai are the bravest of the Thracians and the most holy. They believe that they are immortal, forever living in the following sense. They think that they do not die, and that the one who dies joins Zalmoxis, a divine being. Some call this same being Gebelizis. Every four years, they send a messenger to Zelmoxis, who is chosen by chance. They ask him to tell Zelmoxis what they want on that occasion. The mission is performed in the following way. Men standing there for the purpose hold three spears. Other people take the one who is sent to Zelmoxis by his hands and feet and filing him in the air on the spears. If he dies pierced, they think that the divinity is going to help them. If he does not die, it is he who is accused. They declare that he is a bad person. And after he has been charged, they send another one. The messenger is told the request while he is still alive. The same Thracians, on other occasions, when he thunders and lightens, shoot up their arrows against the sky and menace the divinity because they think there is no god than their own. Zalmoxis, or Salmoxis as Aristotle calls him, has etymological connections to Dionysus through the name Zemele, or Semele's son. Zemele, or Semele, means earth in Thracian or Dacian, clear connection to Dionysus. And what's even more interesting, if you notice Herodotus gives a second name for Zalmoxis, which is Gebelizis. This breaks down into two words, Gebeli and Isis, Kybelis Zeus, showing connections to Sabasius and the Phrygian great mother Kybeli once again. Haskius tells us that Gebelizis was also called Sabasius by the Goths of the Jordanes and equated this god with Kronos and Saturn. Menasius of Petre identified Zelmoxis with Kronos, which makes this connection even stronger since both are underworld kings and judges of the dead who give agriculture and equality for the poor and the rich. In fact, Dionysus, although he's the grandson of Saturn, according to Nonus, has the same spirit. This brings our journey into the Germanic North. Zalmoxis survives in the pagan north for centuries. In the 13th century, Zalmoxis is evolved into Zemeleuctus, as well as the earth goddess Zemele, now called Zemina, are both worshipped by Gothic pagans living in the far north, as far as Lithuania. This would be the last surviving trace of the ancient Bronze Age Dionysian religion. Zemeleuctus, father, Perquanos, married to his mother, Zemna, a deity connected to oak trees, storms, and thunderbolts, like Zeus, which shows that many of these ancient elements are still intact in medieval Europe. The Germanic is related to the Vedic pantheons through linguistics that both trace back to the Proto-Indo-European. The god Shiva and Dionysus are both depicted as young, beautiful, effeminate, both riding on animals and wearing animal skins and carrying a magic staff or wand. 
Shiva, like Dionysus, is also known as the Chthonic Lord, who is associated with the arts, intoxication, and revelry. Strabo cites texts of Megasthenes, known as Indica, written during the time of Alexander the Great, in which he calls Shiva an Indian Dionysus, or alternatively, Euripides calls Dionysus the god of the Orient, because of their similar use of the phallus within the mysteries and intoxication by a sacred drink. Kaikion and Soma may be made differently, but their purpose was to put the initiates into the state of the frenzy so they can receive the inspiration of the god. What's even more mind-blowing is when we look at the Phrygian Dionysus known as Sabasius, his name Saba Dios, has Proto-Indo-European roots that trace back to Sawa Dewa. This was put forth by Franz Kumat, Belgian archaeologist, historian, and a PhD philologist, professor in linguistics, who studied on Mithra and Dionysus, says that Saba comes from the Proto-Indo-European SWO, and that the name Shiva also has a common root there. Shiva. These two can possibly be located Shiva Deva or Saba Dios. And we know that the Vedic Aryans once lived in between the Black and Caucasus region, which is where Sabasius is venerated. Once again, this all demonstrates how ancient and widespread the Dionysian religion is. Mohenjo Daro. 2350 to 2000 BCE, archaeology shows a proto-Shiva as a horn deity described as the master of animals and plants. The oldest form of Dionysus, according to Diodorus of Sicily, is from Asia, and some claim that it could be from this region who is also horned and called master of animal husbandry. Diodorus says, some writers of myths, however, relate that there was a second Dionysus who was much earlier in time than the one that we have just mentioned, Sabasius. They state also that he excelled in sagacity and was the first to attempt the yoking of oxen and by their aid to effect the sowing of the seed, this being the reason why they represent him having horns. The Vedic religion shows direct connection to these three medieval Lithuanian gods that evolved from Zalmoxis, Zeus, and Semele. Through linguistic connections, as well as the mythology itself, Indra, Mitra, and Varuna can be connected to these three. The Mitra-Varuna dichotomy is comparable to the Apollonian-Dionysian dichotomy that I explained earlier, but according to philologist Jean de Vries, Odin, the Norse god, also has a relationship with this duality of opposites. 